Now at 9, Missouri Southern is cleaning up after a pipe breaks in floods one of its buildings. Plus, how the Miami Public Library is celebrating the birthday of country music legend Dolly Parton. More than 300 U.S. mayors are in Washington for the U.S. Conference of Mayors Winter Meeting. I'm Connor Hansen in New York with the latest on their meeting with President Biden. Coming up. The four states most watched news starts now. This is KOM News at 9 on Fox 14. I'm Elise Snowy. Carthage Junior High School has a new assistant principal. Josh Van It's Like brings the experience of both an educator and coach with a background in teaching math and pre-algebra, as well as coaching junior high football, basketball, and track. Van Slyke's appointment becomes effective for the 2024 to 2025 school year. Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty joins us with the first look at weather. Well, of course, back in the deep freeze for us today, we actually had a midnight high. This is 26 degrees, but we didn't get out of the teens all day long. In fact, we dropped to seven, advertised 45 degrees. We're going to stay below normal once again as we go through uh, the next few days, but at least we're going to get rid of the extreme cold by the second half of the weekend. Wind chill advisory in effect till noon tomorrow. It's breezy out there, but of course, when temperatures get this cold, you don't like the wind because it makes it feel even colder. All right, not a whole bunch going on for us. The central plains looking pretty good, but look at our wind chills later on tonight down to about minus 10 to minus 15. Brutally cold. And then as we go through the daytime hours tomorrow, still our wind chill is only going to be about zero to five above all day long. Now we could get a little bit of freezing rain in the forecast Sunday night. I'll have those details for you here in just a bit. All right, Doug, thanks. The city of Carthage is asking residents to take a survey about the aquatic center. The Carthage Municipal Pool was originally designed in the 1930s. In addition to the outdated layout, the facility has experienced significant maintenance challenges. Carthage Parks and Recreation Department is asking residents to provide their input to understand the needs and priorities of the community. For more information on how to take the survey, you can visit our website, kamnewsnow.com. Evergy Energy customers in Missouri will soon see a change in their energy bills. Starting February 1st, as many as 30 counties in the Show Me State, including Barton and Vernon counties, will see the cost of their energy bills go up by another $1.35 a month. A residential customer using 1,000 kilowatt hours of electricity a month will see the additional charge. More than 80 staff members at Missouri Southern had to move their offices to different buildings after a fire sprinkler system pipe broke on the third floor of Hearns Hall on Sunday. Despite the challenges of relocation, the employees are maintaining a positive attitude about the incident. KOM's Fernanda Silva spoke to some of them. I call it camping because it's kind of like we're all camping together and I, en I enjoy being in the banter of the daily. Alicia Hughes is one of 85 MSSU employees who were forced to move from Hearns Hall to other facilities on campus. University official says the water ran for about 30 minutes before it could be shut off, spreading water to all three floors of the building. The cause for this is still being investigated. At this point, we don't know if it's weather related. It, it possibly could be. There was uh, water just flowing down stairwells. Uh, there was standing water uh, two to three inches, um, so it was a pretty significant situation. Now these staff members are working to make the most of it. We're looking for ways to get rid of things that we no longer need. We're, getting, we're looking at our need for more electronic storage of information and just a lot of opportunities in this move. But moving has its challenges. When you think about your office, it's kind of your home, you know, from day to day and everybody helped with trucks and dollies and all kinds of support. We had people from all over campus helping us. And adapting to a new work routine is not always easy. We're still getting adjusted. It's taken a little bit of time. My department is all in one classroom space where we used to have individual offices, so it's a little different. We're very cozy and happy working together as a team. Working as a team to adjust to their new yet temporary office. In Joplin, Fernanda Silva, KOM News. MSSU hopes to have the building back in operation by the summer. 
Gamers from three other universities came to Pitt State today for an eSports competition. Teams from Missouri Southern, Emporia State, and Missouri Western showed up to compete in four games. Valorant, Rocket League, Overwatch, and League of Legends. For this event, the competitors were set up on this stage in the Dottie and Bill Miller Theater with spectators viewing a live stream in the Linda and Lee Scott Performance Hall. So eSports is uh, competitive video games uh, at, at, at its core. So th there are various different titles, you know, like, for, so I, I like to compare it to like a track meet where, you know, you go, you have your, your runners, you have your jumpers, you have your throwers, right? Those are all different events, but they're all combined into one, you know, uh, thing. That's what eSports is. So we have, you know, our first person shooters, our MOBAs, our, you know, and th th those are some, some lingo with it, but just different types of games that we compete against. The competition began at 10 a.m. and lasted all day. Today is country music legend Dolly Parton's birthday and the Miami Public Library is celebrating. Today they hosted a party featuring seven pieces of Dolly inspired art. The library auctioned the art off through Facebook before the party with the proceeds going to support the Ottawa County chapter of Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. So the program is where every child under the age of five can receive a free book every single month until their fifth birthday. And so it's free to them, however, as a community and as a whole, we have to pay for those items. It's great, man. Uh, most of our employees are still in school too, so uh, doing something that can like contribute to education um, is, is great because all of our kids are still in school. Um, and I know that, you know, probably some of them might have been Imagination Library kids too. Miami Police Chief Thomas Anderson even dressed up as Dolly Parton for the party. Coming up, why some health experts say the number on the scale shouldn't be the only thing determining if you're healthy. If you love your daily cup of OJ, maybe think of swapping to an actual orange instead. A new analysis of prior studies found drinking a glass of more of 100% fruit juice each day was linked to weight gain in children and adults. Doctors say it's likely because you can easily gulp down too much in one sitting. Fruits have natural sugar that slowly releases into the body. Doctors say fruit juice should be seen as an occasional sweet treat and not a way to quench thirst. Many of us have being healthier on our list of ways to better ourselves. For some, that may mean losing weight. But for some, health experts believe the number on the scale shouldn't be the only factor to consider when weighing our health. Mandy Gaither has more on what makes a healthy weight and why changes in diet and exercise don't help everyone. In the U.S., it's long been considered a serious health issue. Being overweight or obese can lead to dangerous problems. But when it comes to the number on the scale, one size may not fit all. You can't just judge the book by its cover and assume right. that someone that is larger is unhealthy and someone that is lean is healthy, right? That's, that's the assumption that people make. And I call that practicing street corner medicine. In the Chasing Life podcast, obesity medicine physician scientist Fatima Cody Stanford says weight doesn't necessarily dictate health. She says it's just one factor that plays a role, but by itself, it doesn't give the whole picture because it doesn't show a person's ability to function and perform at that weight. Someone who's lean may be very unhealthy, and someone who's heavier may be healthier. While healthy eating and exercise are both important to health, some experts say not everyone will lose weight that way and the research around obesity is changing. What we're starting to see is that there are actually different types of overweight and obesity, different classes. You could even call them class A, class B, class C, and they respond to different things. Dr. Sanjay Gupta says there are some people who respond better to healthier lifestyle changes while others won't. That's why he says weight loss drugs are gaining popularity because of the number of people they can potentially help. What the challenge is for a lot of doctors, especially especially obesity medicine doctors, is trying to figure out which class of people, uh, a class of patient they're actually dealing with. Dr. Stanford says severe obesity is classified by body mass index or BMI alone, which she says is flawed and says she says a deeper look into a person's metabolic health parameters is needed for a patient looking at things like cholesterol values, fasting insulin, glucose and liver function.
Musicians, surgeons, and even gamers perform better after physical exercise. New research from the University of Copenhagen shows after participants rode a bike, the part of their brain that remembers fine motor skills performed about 10% better. Researchers say this could apply to performing better in everyday tasks like driving a car. Doug is next with a complete look at the forecast. And later, the Chiefs get set to head to Buffalo for Patrick Mahomes' first road playoff game. Voice of the Chiefs, Mitch Holtus, breaks it down. Well, of course, another cold one for us today. Uh, all day long, we couldn't get out of the teens, and so far, January has been uh, below average. Uh, I do think we're going to kick it up a notch a little bit toward the warmer side as we get through the last two weeks of January. But we've been in the deep freeze since last Friday. We had a high of 52, midnight high, but we were in the teens all day, the 19. Look at this high of a 1 on Sunday, 9, 13, 36, 42, and then back to 17 for us today, which kind of stinks. Let's go outside. Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex. Look at the flags which are blowing in the wind uh, when you get this cold of course you get that wind chill and this arctic air is just really kind of dense across the central plains it retreated for a couple days here it is again sticks around for us tomorrow but watch this on sunday watch it retreat it goes away we're not gonna have to deal with arctic air at least the next two or three weeks probably three weeks maybe even four so uh, just a little bit longer and then we'll get it out of here wind chill advisory in effect until noon for us tomorrow due to the light winds and our wind chills and our temperatures so the wind chill factor down to about minus 15 by morning remember to continue to drip your faucets all the way through the weekend you can stop doing it on sunday and wash the pets they don't like being cold either Wind chills tomorrow, 0 to 5 above. They go back down to about minus 5 by the time we head into Sunday morning. All right, not a whole bunch going on here. Pretty much clear skies, but our next storm system brewing out across the Pacific Northwest. This will start to affect us by the time we get into Sunday night. Now, until we get there, we look okay. It's just cold. Temperatures 3, maybe 4 during the morning hours. By noon, should be in the mid-teens. I think most of us get to about 20, maybe 21. 19 Stockton, let's go 20 in Fort Scott, let's go Venita 23, let's go Pineville 25, Bentonville 22. Tomorrow night, some clouds start to increase, but not as cold, still cold, but not as cold mid-teens. Sunday, a lot of clouds, but look at our highs. We get into the mid-30s, still 10 degrees below our average, but looking better. Now, Sunday night, so here's 8.30 p.m. See this pink? This is freezing rain and freezing drizzle, which starts to press through the region. It's going to be fairly light, but we are going to have batches with temperatures sitting 30 to 31 degrees. So that this could put a glaze on the roadways as we go into Monday morning. Good news here is we get above freezing on Monday. So if we do have any issues, it will melt late morning on Monday. But a nice little glaze is definitely possible across the region. So we'll start with some freezing rain and sleet and then we transition over to rain as we go into Monday afternoon. All right, day planner for you Saturday, 6 at 9 a.m., 17 by 1, 19 by 5 p.m. Deep freeze for the next couple days, 22 tomorrow, 38 Sunday, 40 on Monday, but we got to watch that morning ice. And then upper 40s to near 50 most of next week, but plenty of chances for rain all the way through the week. Elise? Coming up, the president making good on a campaign promise. New Hampshire is the first in the nation primary, but it also holds the title of the number one state for student loan debt. I'm Madison Allworth in Durham, New Hampshire. Coming up, I'll explain the latest on student loan forgiveness. feeling better about the economy this month than they have since the summer of 2021. The University of Michigan's January Consumer Sentiment Index rose to a level of 78.8% from 69.7 in December. And those responding were more optimistic about the next six months. Americans are predicting inflation will retreat to 2.9% in the next year. President Biden canceling nearly $5 billion in student loans today, which is top of mind for voters in New Hampshire. Fox Business Madison Allworth is in Durham, New Hampshire with more. 
the Biden administration announcing this morning an additional $5 billion in student loan forgiveness, the latest move in his attempt to make good on a campaign promise, just four days before the New Hampshire primary. These moves raising some eyebrows. College has long been seen as the way to secure a more prosperous future. But with rising tuition costs, many students say they're graduating with more of a debt burden. I paid those loans off. Republican Ross Berry graduated college with $33,000 of debt. He worked hard to now be debt free. No one else should be responsible for the loans that I take, especially working class people. But some New Hampshire voters are grateful for President Biden's forgiveness efforts. I wasn't able to pay my loans back over so many years and they went to default. And that was holding me back from being able to go to college again, which I want to do. So this helped me out with, the, with my credit as well. Mary Jane is far from alone. New Hampshire is the state with the highest percentage of residents with student loan debt. And the average debt here, $47,000. But there are other options. Les Houston owns and operates the Advanced Trade School in Brentwood, New Hampshire. He says his graduates are not happy. I think the highest level of frustration are from recent graduates of trade programs that are now in the trades saying, I paid my own way. Students like Mason Langevin choose these trade programs to avoid the student debt predicament. Why would I spend four years at a college and come out with hundreds of thousands of debt where I could go to four years of plumbing school and the most it'll be is like 4,000? It's, it's like a no-brainer for me. College loan forgiveness is one issue that all the remaining GOP candidates agree on. None of them are for these bailouts. In Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Madison Allworth, Fox Business. Up next, the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile visits the four states. We'll hear from the hot doggers behind the wheel. A celebrity of sorts rolled into southwest Missouri today. Oscar Meyer's famous Wienermobile made an appearance at the Walmart in Joplin and Webb City. There were fun games to enjoy and Wienermobilia was also handed out, including the iconic Wiener Whistle. While the event is fun for participants, drivers say it's fun for them too. Every day, just like, you know, being able to drive it around and just making people smile brightening their day. It's, you don't meet anybody that's upset seeing the 27 foot long hot dog on wheels. So just driving it around, getting those reactions, the pictures, we love it. And uh, it's just great to share that with the, with the communities we visit. One common misconception drivers have to clear up is while the Wienermobile looks like food, it's not a food truck. 30 more minutes of news, weather and sports coming your way. President Biden meets with mayors from across the country to discuss a wide ranging list of issues. Plus, a bipartisan push in Congress could expand tax credits available to families. You're watching the four states most watched news. This is KOEM News at 9 on Fox 14. I'm Elise Snowy. Mayors from dozens of cities around the country are in Washington to meet with President Biden and other cabinet members for the U.S. Conference of Mayors Winter Meeting. President Biden will hear about how major issues like immigration and fentanyl are impacting cities on a local level. Fox News correspondent Connor Hansen has the latest from New York. Mayors get the job done. Immigration is top of mind for mayors visiting the nation's capital this week. Denver's mayor says they're in crisis mode, saying they've had 36,000 migrants arrive there, straining the city's resources. And all they want is the chance to work and support themselves and their families. Mayor Mike Johnston says he laid out what he'd like to see happen. Work authorization for folks that arrive in our city so they can support themselves. Federal money to help us integrate them successfully like we've done with other asylum seekers. And a coordinated plan for entry so cities and states can share uh, that uh, weight of the folks that are arriving. Immigration also on the minds of voters. A Fox News voter analysis shows more than 40 percent are calling it the most important issue facing the country. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, who's facing a House investigation, spoke about the issue to mayors Thursday. The collaboration and coordination that is needed is not only among federal, state, and local officials. It is also between us and Congress as we work to fix what everyone agrees is a broken immigration system that has needed legislative repair for decades. Secretary of State Antony Blinken told mayors they are working on the fentanyl crisis every day at the federal level. We have a profound responsibility. If this is the number one killer mm -hmm. of Americans 18 mm -hmm. to 49, we have to be doing something about it across the entire uh, chain. 
Secretary Blinken spoke today after meetings with Mexican counterparts, saying he thinks they're making great progress in addressing the immigration surge. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox News. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland says the Justice Department's 600-page report on the Uvalde school shooting makes clear what many have believed from the beginning, that the students and staff at Robb Elementary School were failed by the people who were supposed to help them. Police waited 77 minutes before confronting the gunmen. The report puts much of the blame on a school police chief, Pete Arredondo, who they say failed to treat the incident as an active shooter situation. Congress's top tax writers are pushing a new bipartisan tax agreement. It includes numerous tax breaks, and the big winners are parents and U.S. companies. Fox News correspondent Rebecca Castor reports. This is a copy of the federal. It's almost that time of year again when Americans file their taxes and Uncle Sam decides if you owe money or get some back. But this tax season, parents could catch a break. What we're trying to do is create some breathing room for parents. Lawmakers from both parties hope to do that by increasing and expanding the child tax credit to include more low-income families. It's part of Congress's latest tax plan, an $80 billion bipartisan deal. So it's going to help them deal with the inflation and put food on the table, put shelter over their heads, um, be able to deal with child care costs. Under the new plan, the max refundable amount for parents would increase from the current level of $1,600 per child to $1,800 for 2023, $1,900 in 2024, and $2,000 in 2025. Republicans and Democrats see it as a win-win, Low-income families are receiving more assistance, and Republicans negotiated more tax breaks for U.S. companies. It represents a great opportunity to help working families. The last time the child tax credit increased was in 2021, and data from the U.S. Census Bureau indicates it helped lift 3 million children out of poverty. But critics argue the new qualifications to receive the credit walk a fine line and could discourage people from working. Parents can now rely on last year's income and still claim the credit. When you de-link work, you actually made people's lives worse. Still, lawmakers hope to pass the bill before tax filing season begins on January 29th. In Washington, Rebecca Castor, Fox News. A bit later, how you could earn some serious cash if you're willing to go phone free for a month. Press. Well, of course, another cold one for us today. Uh, all day long, we couldn't get out of the teens. And so far, January has been uh, below average. Uh, I do think we're going to kick it up a notch a little bit toward the warmer side as we get through the last two weeks of January. But we've been in the deep freeze since last Friday. We had a high of 52, midnight high, but we were in the teens all day, the 19. Look at this high of a 1 on Sunday, 9, 13, 36, 42, and then back to 17 for us today, which kind of stinks. Let's go outside. Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex. Look at the flags, which are blowing in the wind. Uh, when you get this cold, of course, you get that wind chill. And this Arctic air is just really kind of dense across the Central Plains. It retreated for a couple days. Here it is again. Sticks around for us tomorrow. But watch this on Sunday. Watch it retreat. It goes away. We're not going to have to deal with Arctic air at least the next two or three weeks, probably three weeks, maybe even four. So uh, just a little bit longer and then we'll get it out of here. Wind chill advisory in effect until noon for us tomorrow due to the light winds and our wind chills and our temperatures. So the wind chill factor down to about minus 15 by morning. Remember to continue to drip your faucets all the way through the weekend. You can stop doing it on Sunday and wash the pets. They don't like being cold either. Wind chills tomorrow, zero to five above. They go back down to about minus five by the time we head into Sunday morning. All right, not a whole bunch going on here. Pretty much clear skies, but our next storm system brewing out across the Pacific Northwest. This will start to affect us by the time we get into Sunday night. Now, until we get there, we look okay. It's just cold. Temperatures three, maybe four during the morning hours. By noon, should be in the mid-teens. I think most of us get to about 20, maybe 21. 19 Stockton. Let's go 20 in Fort Scott. Let's go Venita 23. Let's go Pineville 25, Bentonville 22. Tomorrow night, some clouds start to increase, but not as cold. Still cold, but not as cold. Mid-teens. Sunday, a lot of clouds, but look at our highs. 
we get into the mid 30s, still 10 degrees below our average, but looking better. Now, Sunday night, so here's 8.30 p.m. See this pink? This is freezing rain and freezing drizzle, which starts to press through the region. It's going to be fairly light, but we are going to have batches with temperatures sitting 30 to 31 degrees, so that this could put a glaze on the roadways as we go into Monday morning. Good news here is we get above freezing on Monday, so if we do have any issues, it will melt late morning on Monday, but a nice little glaze is definitely possible across the region. So we'll start with some freezing rain and sleet, and then we transition over to rain as we go into Monday afternoon. All right, day planner for you Saturday, six at 9 a.m., 17 by one, 19 by 5 p.m. Deep freeze for the next couple days, 22 tomorrow, 38 Sunday, 40 on Monday, but we gotta watch that morning ice and then upper 40s to near 50 most of next week, but plenty of chances for rain all the way through the week. Elise. All right, thanks, Doug. Well, there are sports fans, and then there's this guy. Meet the man who took it upon himself to commission a 60-foot mural in his yard for the Chiefs and all things Kansas City. Alan Shope spoke with him and shows us that mural. This was just a big, ugly concrete retaining wall. Well, that was then. This is now. We really wanted to turn it into something that was actually appealing to look at. And for Parkville's Tom Klein, few things look better than this stadium and this quarterback. And that facial expression. So he called Kansas City artist Melissa Ferris and said, paint me a giant 60-foot mural. He told me he wanted a Kansas City concept. And we wanted all things Kansas City and with a special focus on our sports team. So Melissa went to work. We wanted it realistic. We wanted some Kansas City icons and some sports players. So the project grew and grew, adding more Kansas City landmarks, even Town Topic and Arthur Bryant. If you start on one end of the of the court and move, it's like the, it moves with you. Yeah, 60 feet long and growing. It's just something I love to do. Melissa says it took about a month to complete, but she says some days were colder than others. There were days where it was 35 and it was so cold I could barely even paint. As for Tom, he's not done yet. He says next up are the Royals World Series banners and somehow he's going to get his favorite player on this wall. Kelsey's coming. Coming up in sports, the voice of the Chiefs previews Patrick Mahomes' first road playoff game. Plus a couple local teams try to punch their ticket to the championship round of the Bill Hansen Memorial Tournament. John Dales has those stories and more up next. Another day full of high school basketball here in the four states. Starting first with the four state classic taking place at Frontenac High School where the Webb City boys are looking to advance to the championship game as they have each of the last five years in that tournament. Webb City Cardinals tonight in the semis taking on Life Prep from Wichita. Each of them looking to stamp their ticket to the championship. Kicking things off, Baron Duda with the steal, drives up the court, pulls up for three and nails it. That's his 100th three-point field goal in his career. Card starting an 11-0 run, but life prep finds its footing. Check this out. Determined Russell assists Arthur Vidiera. He dunks it. He finishes the game with 28. Life prep again, off the miss three. Vidiera gets it again, gets the contact bucket and the foul. Webb City leads 36-32 at halftime, but never gets closer. Check out this pass from Holton Keith behind the back to Duda. In for two. Keith finishes with five assists. Duda scores 24 on the night. And Duda knocks down another three to seal this one. Webb City defeats Life Prep 71-61 to move on to the finals for their sixth consecutive season. Shifting gears over to the Bill Hansen Memorial at Pittsburgh. The Carl Junction girls winners last night trying to repeat that tonight against a very good opponent. Carl Junction against the number four team in 6A in Kansas. That's Blue Valley Northwest. Winner goes on to the championship. First quarter, Laney Douglas posts up, gets the bucket. Huskies open the game with a 12 to nothing run. Later in the half, Kylie Scott dishes to Desi Williams. That's good for two. Lady Bulldogs trailing by 10. Second quarter, Tamia Davis gets the steal, and she's gonna finish with the layup on the other end. But Carl Junction responds with a bucket of its own in the paint, Kylie Scott works in. CJ trailing by 21 at halftime though. Second half, Carl Junction draws up a nice play to Desi Williams for an easy two. 
but Blue Valley Northwest just couldn't miss today. Tamiya Davis in the corner knocks down that three ball. Blue Valley Northwest goes on to beat Carl Junction 63 to 22. Over to the boys division, the host team Pittsburgh facing the Owasso Rams in the semifinals. Opening minutes of the contest, Jaden Brown fakes it, then he hits the jumper for two. Later in the half, Mason English stole the spotlight as he drives in for the layup. Later he pulls up from the top of the key for three. Then English again launches another three-pointer and that's good. Pittsburgh playing well in the first half but still down five at halftime. In the third quarter, Cody Lechleiter hits a big three-point shot in the, field, in the corner. Owasso up by 14. Pittsburgh coming back the other way. Mason English gets fouled and you can count the bucket. But Owasso had answers all night. Bowden Williams pulls up from mid-range to knock down the shot. Owasso goes on to beat Pittsburgh 76-62. The Purple Dragons play in the third place game tomorrow at 11.30. Then over to Cherokee, Kansas, where the Lancer Classic is taking place. College Heights and Riverton boys basketball meet in the semifinals. Winner advances to the championship game. College Heights boys basketball facing off against Riverton. The Cougars come out strong. Colson Dickinson, no hesitation on the catch and shoot three. Game tied at five at that point. Then Dickinson again gets the steal near midcourt. Then check this out. Weaving his way past Riverton defenders gets a tricky layup to fall. Cougars with a four point lead. Rams though, break the full court pressure this time. And check this out. They go up top to Tarek Richardson for the alley-oop. Riverton down by five at halftime. Second half now, this is one of three three-pointers in the third quarter by Cale Forbes. Cuts the lead to two. Then Lock North goes back to the alley-oop to Richardson. Hard to stop him at six foot nine. Riverton wins a close one over College Heights, 60 to 57. The Rams will play in the championship tomorrow night. Over to the NFL, as we all know, big game Sunday. The Chiefs go to Buffalo for an AFC Divisional Playoff. More on Kansas City's quest for a sixth straight AFC Championship game appearance in this week's Minute with Mitch. The Chiefs' kingdom and the Chiefs earned that wild card win last week in the frigid temperatures, and now it's on to Buffalo for the Divisional Playoff round. Has anyone really noticed the insane postseason numbers put up by Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes in their careers? How about this one? Only Pro Football Hall of Fame wide receiver icon Jerry Rice has more playoff receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns than Travis Kelsey. And Rice did it in 29 playoff games. Kelsey's done it in 19. Patrick Mahomes in his 15 playoff games has 12 playoff wins, the best TD to INT ratio in the NFL, and the best passer rating in NFL playoff history. And if Mahomes wins this weekend, it'll be the fifth straight year with at least two playoff wins. That's an NFL record. Crazy numbers on this Minute with Mitch. The Minute with Mitch is brought to you by Como Jewelry. Every day's game day, Como Jewelry, Pittsburgh Joplin. That's a look at sports. We're back after this. Think you could stay off your phone for a month? What if you got paid to do it? Well, a dairy company, Siggy's, is willing to pay $10,000 to see if you can manage a month away from your phone. Fox's Dominique Newland has more. They're in our hands, pockets, basically always in close reach. Smartphones, whether we like to admit it or not, are an essential to everyday life. So essential, dairy company Siggy's is willing to pay $10,000 to see if people can manage a month without their phone. Heck yeah, $10,000? Oh, that would pay my whole, not my whole college, but it'd pay a lot of it. The company will choose 10 participants based on the essays they submit when they sign up. Siggy's will then send a lockbox and flip phone with a prepaid SIM card good for one month. Some Arizonans say they would be up for the challenge. I'm already like practicing that. Like my screen time is down to like one hour a day. Sorry, I'm eating right now, but so it wouldn't be a problem at all for me. While others aren't exactly ready for the commitment. Yeah, I'm a student. So much of our lives depend on our phones, Slack messages, emails. I don't think I'll be able to do it. I'm from San Diego, so I wouldn't be able to talk to my friends or family like 
easy at all. Siggy says the goal of the contest is to help people start new healthy habits going into 2024. Goes to show a digital detox could just benefit your peace of mind and your bank account. Coming up, we'll learn about a unique theater program in Florida, changing the lives of kids with special needs. A unique theater program in Tampa is changing lives. The Penguin Project is designed for children and young adults with special needs, giving them a creative outlet for acceptance and self-expression. Fox's Mark Wilson has more. Dance moves are contagious Come at the on, Penguin Anna. Project in Tampa. It is so much fun. It is my favorite thing in the world. They are so excited to do everything and anything. They love singing and acting and dancing, and we have a great time every night that we do rehearsal. The Penguin Project is a theater program specifically designed for eight-year-olds and young adults with special needs. They're wonderful actors and wonderful singers and wonderful dancers, and they have so much fun building these characters over time. Circles! Rehearsals provide friendships and camaraderie, all amongst these young actors outshining any limitations imposed by their conditions. Peer mentors work with the actors and create a supportive community that embrace everyone for who they are. The peer mentors and the artists do work together. All of the lines and all of the singing and dancing and the peer mentors are there to be a helping hand and an encouragement, but they're on stage with them through the show. This is the sixth year for the program, and it's already having a positive impact on each participant. It is like so fun to act, and it's really like good. I do theater with performances in Ms. Nora and, and all, everybody with, with all of my friends. It really brightens my heart to see, um, you know, what Nora has done with them. A shining light where everybody shines. Well, theater helps everybody. Um, it helps build self-confidence. It helps, it helps build leadership skills. It helps build community, working together towards one common goal. A place where the stage becomes a canvas and the differences are not just accepted, but celebrated. That's our time for tonight. We'll leave you with video of gorillas celebrating National Popcorn Day at the Brookfield Zoo. Thanks for making us part of your night.